So the last video was really, hey, here's what a view is, and you know what, it's a named query, and you can use that view, and you've kind of bookmarked that query, and it's really, really reusable. Well, there are other reasons to use views. There are, uh, the reusability is a major part of it. Why do you want to have to keep retyping the same query? Uh, maybe you have a certain calculation and you just want to store that calculation in a query where you're concatenating multiple fields or you're doing some complicated arithmetic expressions with round functions or conversions. You just want those to be consistent. Other reasons to use views would be possible performance gains. Now we're just starting our path of using what's called compiled code. So there's basically two types of, oh, I, before I get into that, let's do this. The, let, me, let me cover some other info. I, I'll get, I say I love talking about this stuff, and so I'll start getting sidetracked and take you down all these little fun paths. Okay, so let me stick to the title of the video. The title of the video is, and I'll, I'll give us some place to write here, the four things that SQL Server goes through to run your query or code or whatever you want to type in. Okay, There are four steps, so the four things that SQL, the four steps I think would maybe be a, a more appropriate title. Uh, this file, what I'm typing in right now, will be attached with this video. So whatever the name of this video file is, just look for an SQL file of the same name, and that way you don't have to write everything down here. Okay. So basically, before you run your code, SQL Server steps through these four, four things. So before you get your result set, or your error, if that may in fact uh, be the case, it has to go through four, uh, four different steps before it does that. Okay. So step number one. It has to parse the query. Now we've talked a little bit about this here. So we could say like select all from, uh, what was the table that we had in Learn It First? DBO.member, right? And you see it's not showing up in our IntelliSense. And that's because, oops, I've made a mistake. We're in the wrong database. But you see the little handy check mark right here. The parser the query parser okay, will actually just look through and see are all the clauses in the right order? Did you spell select correctly? Did you spell it S-E-E-L-C-T? <laughs> I've done that uh, all too often. Okay. So parsing does not care whether or not the objects exist. It's strictly concerned with syntax. For example, if I did um, order by last name where first name equals Scott, well, I've flipped the order of these statements. The where clause comes before the order by clause in SQL. And the parser is designed to pick that sort of thing up. And I can double click and it highlights the theoretically offending line of code here. So that's all it's really doing. It's not looking in the tables, looking at your objects to verify that the objects exist. It's just looking to see, do, do you have everything in the right order? Okay. It's doing some basic things here. We could also do uh, another example would be to say declare um, i a variable integer and we want to put Scott in the variable in the integer value. Will this parse? It does parse. It's not doing runtime type checking. Okay? Now, the second step actually now binds your query, your code. This is when it does things like type checking. It looks to see if the objects exist. Okay? So we'll say here, um, use master, just so you can replay uh, this fails step one, okay. fails step one because it cannot parse this and we get a syntax error. Okay. A lot of times if you fail the parsing it's generally because you get a syntax error. Okay. A missing error like here I've just highlighted some of that. Okay, So it's looking now for a stored procedure because it doesn't see the word select. Uh, now it's looking again a syntax error. 
Uh, so down here, we fail step one. Now failing step two, so we, I'll do this, sorry. So pass step one, but fails step two. Okay. Syntactically, this parses successfully, but when we execute this, we get a runtime error. We get a type conversion error. It cannot convert Scott to a data type of integer. It's trying to bind the value to the variable. That fails. Okay. Another example, we're in master. And so we now say, let me select all from or select from member. Well, member's not in this database. Okay? Parse is fine. However, execute. When it goes to bind, it's trying to bind the query. It's trying to uh, sniff out to see which columns exist in the member table. And it cannot find a table named member. Cannot find a view named member. And so it fails. So binding is where it actually binds the values to the parameters. It auto expands the column list, like we said down here, select star. Well, it has to actually auto expand that. And so it's going to have to look at the table to find out which columns to return in the result set. And it cannot bind. There is no table named member. OK, now step number three is something that we really have not talked about in too much. It is create or reuse a plan. So this requires some new knowledge. And this, this whole idea, this concept of a plan, is really what uh, is, we're just using this video as a lead-in to the next several videos on execution plans, compiled versus ad hoc, other things that we're going to to actually see. Okay. So we have the concept of a compiled plan. Okay. And a compiled plan, I'll just do it like that, is a SQL, let's just do deal with a statement right now. I'm not going to get into batch versus statement level recompilations and such. Is a SQL statement, like a, a query just stick with me for the time being. Let's, let's focus on one thing. Let's just call it a query uh, for the time being. A SQL statement that has been pre-compiled and pre-optimized by SQL Server. Right. Now what that means, we have a pre-compiled plan. Right. SQL Server has to know how to satisfy your query. Uh, let's let's make a bigger query. Um, let me use the uh, Learn It First database. Actually, I'll use AdventureWorks here because I need some bigger tables. Um, give me just a second. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, do I not have that? Um, why is it? Oh, let me refresh my cache. It's still picking up that I'm in master for some reason. Hmm. Huh. I don't know why it's not doing that. It. I tell you what. Let me do this. Let me put Go in here and then use Adventure Works, and maybe it'll quit giving me caching issues here. Um, person. Okay. Hmm. Person dot address and I'm going to alias that to A because I, I want to grab a few things like let's get the address ID the, the city um, and then we'll join like uh, person dot uh, country state province SP on a dot state province ID equals SP dot state pro don't worry about it if you don't know this you can probably figure out what's going on we have a table that stores the state provinces uh, but instead of repeating those in person dot address we simply refer to them by their code uh, and the same thing goes for the country so we want to join person dot country region we'll call it CR and the country region code would be like US or CA for Canada or UK for United Kingdom uh, is actually stored in the SP, so 
we can see the country region code there. So when I actually run this, uh, we can get the SP name as state province and then the cr.name as country region. Okay. And then I can start filtering down to say where a.city equals Paris. Right. Maybe there's a, a Paris, France, a Paris, Texas, a Paris, Washington, Paris, Brisbane, I, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, okay, this is a query, right? Has this query ever run against this SQL server? You know, we don't really have a way of knowing right off the top of our heads, right? But I'll go ahead and I'll tell you now. It hasn't. And this is the first time I just typed this in. It's never run against SQL Server. So when I go to execute this SQL query, how does SQL Server know how to solve the query? If Does it parse correctly? Yes. Can we bind it correctly? Did Scott, uh, do these columns actually exist? Yes, yes. So parsing and binding works great. So this passes both passes step one and step two. Okay, so it parses and binds successfully as long as we're in the correct database, right? Okay. Now, how should it satisfy this? Now we haven't really gotten into indexes yet. Okay, but I did te teach you a little bit in chapters 2 and 3. The whole purpose of an index is that it helps us get to the data faster. It's a faster way to locate data. When we start looking at these tables, address, state, province, country, region. Do they have any indexes in them? Let's see, address, country, region, state, province. So we see the indexes folder for each of them. Okay, there's a bunch of them there for that one. There's two for that one. And there's four for that one. Okay, so which indexes should it use to run this query? Or should it not use indexes? What's faster? Ooh. You see? SQL Server has to figure that out before it can do step number four. Once the plan execute the plan. The plan is the how. Which index should SQL Server use? What's the compiled plan here? What's the approach to satisfying this query? How should we actually satisfy this query. Which indexes? Should we use the primary key indexes? Do we want to do a clustered index scan or can we do a non-clustered seek? And I know you may not recognize what those terms mean just yet, but chapter 5 all about indexing uh, and more about plans here. Okay, But this plan is the how. I've been in performance tuning situations working on just regular servers where this whole idea of trying SQL Server trying to figure out the best plan to use took seven minutes to complete. Once it figured out what the plan was, actually executing the plan was less than 30 seconds. This is not a trivial expense here. Now today uh, and, and I will go ahead and say that in that in that one instance where it was a seven minute to thirty second uh, situation where it took over seven minutes to generate the plan or figure out what the plan of attack was going to be and then took less than thirty seconds to implement the plan that was SQL Server 2000 in 2005 and with each version uh, 2008 2008 R2 it gets better and more and more efficient at working with plans we get better options uh, which we're going to discover throughout the course here. But the plan is reusable. It is reusable by other users. So once you create the plan, figuring out which indexes to use, for example, uh, which approach, which methodology. You said you wanted to join two join two tables here, uh, three tables. But these are all inner joins. So it can mix and match this joins up as much as it wants. Maybe it decides that it wants to join state province to country region first 
and then join those results to person.address instead of the way you typed it, which was person.address to state province, join those results to country region. All of that is part of the plan. So this plan is incredibly expensive to create. Many times it's more expensive to create the plan than it is to execute the actual query. I'm going to show you tools over the next two videos where we'll actually see examples of that. So what we want to do is when SQL Server encounters some code like this particular query, the first time it gets executed, we pay the penalty. It goes through step one, it parses the query. Step two, it binds the query. Step three, it looks up in the what's called the plan cache. We'll talk more about that over the next couple of videos. And it says, is there already a compiled plan that I can use? Because if there is, I'm going to use that. You see, other people can use this as well. So if Mary yesterday loaded up this query and SQL Server created a compiled plan, you don't have to pay the penalty to go create the plan. You can reuse Mary's plan, assuming that it is an exact plan. We'll say again, I'm only able to give you a little bit. We have to spread this out over several videos here. So this plan, if it exists, you can just basically skip this step. Oh, I've already got a plan. I'm going to go execute that plan. But if the plan does not exist in the plan cache, then you have to go through the expensive operation of creating the plan. Once you create the plan, where are you, what are you going to do with it? Well, what is SQL Server going to do with it? It's going to put it in the plan cache so that the next time you or Mary or John or Shelby or Dennis comes and executes the same code, they will reuse your plan. Make sense? It's plan reuse. So this whole idea, step three, creating or reusing the plan, coming down here, the very first time I execute it, you're going to pay the price. You have to wait. Now, this is going to go by really, really fast. We're, I'm probably, uh, we're tra talking probably 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds. So it's not likely to be seen uh, just visually. In the next couple of videos, we will be able to see the um, the query statistics, and we'll we'll be able to have SQL Server report to us when a compilation has occurred. It's what it's called. It's compiling the plan compilation. Okay. So we're going to execute it, and look for two things. Look for a little bit of a stall at the beginning, a little bit of a wait, and then I'll execute it again. And I want you to see is that wait that was at the beginning there again. And when I say wait, I'm talking 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, so we may not see it, okay? Don't beat me up if you don't. Here we go. Okay. Um, city equal, what did I do wrong here? Uh, state province ID, um, state province code. Um, what have I messed up here? I've messed up something. Okay, see our binding failed. The binding failed. I uh, tried to bind the codes together. State region, province ID. That's I was doing the wrong one there. Okay. Now. Okay, did you see that was just like almost an imperceptible wait. Now I'll run it again and it will be instant. You see, every time I'm running it now we're not having to wait for that compilation to occur. It's going through step one, step two. When it gets to step three, it doesn't have to create the plan. It can reuse an existing plan. And if another user hits the database, they're able to reuse that plan instead of having to create their own. And then once it has decided upon the plan, it executes the plan. OK, I'm going to stop here because I want to come back in the next video and talk to you about what execution plans are. So we're going to see the execution plan, which is an instance of a compiled plan. We're going to talk about show plan, and we're going to start getting into query statistics over the next several videos so we can see these compilations. We can see when we're using um, a, a compiled plan versus when we're having to wait for the SQL Server to compile that plan.